Robert Wise famously spoke of the three P's of directing, passion, patience and perseverance, while our director today adds a fourth P to the mix, perfection. Recognised by his contemporaries as the ultimate director, he leaves no stone unturned, no I undotted and no T uncrossed in his pursuit of perfection. And with his new film, I truly believe he's achieved it. I'm Martina Minow, and today I'm joined by Jack Raven, director of Sliding Jaws. Welcome, Jack. And what a pleasure to be here, Martina. What an absolute pleasure. It's wonderful to see you, Jack. I've followed your work for many years, and Sliding Jaws is the epitome of perfection. You have done a sterling job on it. Well, thank you. That's an absolute pleasure to hear because uh, sometimes you embark on a project as ambitious as this and uh, you don't quite know how it's, uh, how it's going to be received. Um, you're at the mercy of the critics, uh, you're at the mercy of the public, and um, above all, you're sort of at the mercy of your own artistic ego. Uh, but with this project, it's something that I absolutely knew would, uh, would succeed internally. For me, it's, uh, it's the culmination of, of a lifetime of, um, of dreams culmination of a lifetime of dreams. Jack, even when you speak, it gives me shivers. Now, now, Jack, I've obviously watched the film, but our listeners may not have seen it yet. Could you summarise for us what Sliding Jaws is all about? Well, uh, the journey started a long time ago, Martina, with some of the sequels to Jaws, the original, obviously, classic that we all know, just when you thought it was safe to, to go back in the water, etc. But um, I was never quite satisfied. I was never quite satisfied that the peril was there. I was never quite satisfied that the oeuvre had been explored to its full potential. So what I thought was, why not revisit it? but revisit it from several angles at the same time. So um, if, you, if you think about it, the film is really only told from a few perspectives. We don't get the perspective of the shark. We don't get the perspective of some of the people on the beach. We don't get the perspective of the boat. How does that boat feel? That's what I wondered to myself. And um, with Sliding Jaws, I really feel we were able to explore that uh, to its full potential. And I hope you agree that um, we've, uh, we've made some startling discoveries. Oh, truly startling discoveries. I've never looked at a boat before and thought, I wonder what that boat feels. But now I can't walk through the harbour without crying. Honestly, you've changed my perspective on everything. Now, there was a really powerful opening sequence. It was wonderful. We're going to cut to a clip of it now, but in terms of the dynamics and the production, it really was a big splash, wasn't it, Jack? Well, yes, when, when you've worked through your career and worked made so many sort of low-budget and independent films as I have, when someone gives you the, the free reign to, to really go for it, um, I, I feel it was sort of my duty to bring in all of the extras that I could uh, to, to go for it for, with explosions from the start, really to set the tone uh, for this piece. Um, because, of course, we transposed it and, and set it in 1945, uh, which I think really made a big difference um, in terms of, well, it, it's a powerful statement we're making. The metaphors are clear. They speak for themselves. As all good metaphors do. Let's cut to their opening sequence now. Oh, I'm hit again. I just can't believe it. Do you reckon that we'll ever get back to Shark Beach, Sergeant? I'm sure we will, Private. But first, we gotta throw our all into this for another six years. But I can't believe that the sharks threw in with the Japanese. It was just the sneakiest move they ever thought of. Don't you worry, Private. We're gonna do it. We're gonna attempt a sustained military campaign against the sharks. Then the sharks that we know have been gathering in Pearl Harbor are in for a shock when we nuke them twice. Bless you, Sergeant. I could die a happy man now of going to see Alabama in the sky. Don't you dare have an emotion, Private. Don't you dare. Don't you dare have an emotion. I'd challenge anyone not to have an emotion to that sequence. Powerful, isn't it? Very. And obviously we're so used to seeing the soldier's perspective that when we saw the, the parallel scene amongst the shark militia, well, it was really striking, wasn't it? 
Yes, well, I think I think uh, obviously this this is a well studied and, and well documented period in history. Um, but I, as I have throughout my film career, I'm always seeking uh, just to that undiscovered angle. I'm seeking what is it about this story that we haven't considered? What is it that we haven't um, discussed? And whose voice hasn't been heard? So the Shark Militia was an obvious starting point for me, and I'm so delighted that we managed to get Gwyneth Paltrow to play the the voice of the shark because it just it brought it all together for me all the parallels all the the sort of sliding doors influence as well was really there for me from the beginning absolutely and i love gwyn we've been good friends for many many years but I, I just thought she made a wonderful shark and it's not something I thought was in her repertoire. But now I can't imagine her doing anything else, to be honest. Well, she came to me, actually, uh, Martina, and, and she said, Jack, listen, if uh, Robert De Niro can do it, I can do it. And I really think she pulled it off. She really did. Here's, here's my fave, Gwyn, uh, Gwynny, <laughs> um, in the shark militia. I'm a shark. I'm a ooh, everyone. Yeah. Hey man, you ever considered just doing some yoga? No. Take a look at this pebble. Where on your body could you put this pebble to make you happier, healthier, and vaginally more flexible? No, I'm a male shark. No. Well, that doesn't mean I can't assume things, and that doesn't mean I can't assume that you would be able to buy my line of shark products, Sea Goop. For when you just want to stick something somewhere that shouldn't be there. Uh, is this still rolling? Heck yeah, it's still rolling. Heck yeah. Obviously, Gwyn, great leading lady. How did you two get on? Was there a good, uh, good, healthy dynamic between you? Yes, absolutely. I mean, with with uh, superstars like like Gwyneth, you you have to sometimes pander to to their their needs. You have to make them as comfortable as possible to enable them to deliver the performances that they do. Um, so once we got over the um, the demands that she made, the the trailers and the the specific routine, the the uh, massage routine that we had to provide for her um, we got on like a house on fire great I'm so pleased to hear it and and obviously you really put her through her paces the shark militia goes on quite the journey is probably more challenging than anything she's ever done before how did you guide Absolutely. her through this it's a really good question Martina I think what your listeners may not entirely realize is she didn't just do the voice of the shark we were using motion capture from the beginning so she went through a rigorous training regime she uh, lived as a shark for several months and she came back from that experience changed changed scarred but really raring to go with the production of the film absolutely and we've got some footage of when gwyneth was living with the sharks it's it's really something you can tell she really bonded with them let's cut to hey uh hey brian brian the shark you ever uh considered just putting a pebble up your nose no no sh sharks don't do that kind of thing sharks just Bite everything. Just bite? Wow. That sure is a wonderful new perspective. Hey, maybe I should try that. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, biting is horrible. I never realized. It's so freeing. I never realized. Wow. C come here. Bring your tail back here, Brian. No, no get away from me. You fucking coward. Get back here. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I did notice a change in Gwyn. Uh, she did start getting a little bitey. Some people mm. were calling her Gwyneth Paltrow for a little while. She kept snapping away. Yes, it was a difficult breast junket uh, for Gwyneth. Um, but I feel like it's all under the bridge now, and uh, Graham Norton has forgiven her. No, he is the moral compass by whom we are all guided. Absolutely. That always has been. I model my beard on him. Yes, and it's delightful. Um, now, there has been a fair bit of controversy around the battle scene. A few animal activist groups were in touch. They were quite concerned about the welfare of the sharks. Talk me through your process. Well, uh, my lawyers have told me exactly what I can and can't say about the process. So there was a process. Oh, it's always wonderful to get the inside scoop. Oh, come on, Jack. Tell me more. My rival, Rowena Rowe, she always gets the inside scoop on this stuff. Just let me in a little bit, Jack. It's just you and I and our thousands of listeners. 
well, Martina, since you've asked me so nicely, you're in luck. I can give you a, a little bit of uh, insight into the into the process. We did have real sharks involved. We did have real dolphins, um, but all of the bullets, all of the blood, and all of the water was actually not real, all CGI'd. Oh, interesting that you kept the sharks real but didn't put them in water. Only way to preserve their safety, Martina, which is very important to me. And I'm actually, uh, I have been doing some work as a spokesman for various animal charities, some of it court mandated and some of it by choice over the last few months. And it's really opened my eyes to a new perspective on uh, the welfare of our feathered and uh, deliciously skinned friends. Well, and we have actually got uh, an advertising campaign that you have done for one of those welfare charities. Um, we're going to cut to that now. I gathered a hint of insincerity from you in it, Jack, but I don't know if uh, an unrefined ear would hear it. Every three seconds across the United States, an animal, sea mammal or reptile, <laughs> suffers horrible abuse. Yes. We must take care of these sea mammals to the best of our ability. For we are mammals, they are mammals, and there are other mammals. You could say we are mammally. Here's Jack Raven with a little more about why you should care about the sea. I have uh, been court mandated to say that mammals matter and uh, we should take better care of them, be they from Australasia, Africa, Europe, or either of the Americas. Just remember, we are mammalie. We are mammalie. Ah, very catchy. What a, what a slogan that is, Jack. You do have a way with words. Absolutely. And when your name's Raven, you just have an affinity with all of, all of the animals in the world. And I did see, actually, that, that coalescence, that coalition between the sharks and the humans, after all of that fighting, they reconciled and they came together. And it was a really beautiful moment. And, and I did wonder if that was based on your own connection to, to the animal kingdom. Absolutely. I think I've been on a journey. The animals have been on a journey. And now together we're moving forward in the same direction. And I, I really wanted to reflect that in the film. If you, you take the, the general the concept of the film where we go back and we, we revisit uh, the events, but with small changes each time and see how that impacts the film, you can see that my decision in the third act, when we return for the third time to the instances of the war, to completely remove the conflict, to completely remove the humans from the animals and to just let them live in peace, that was really a metaphor, if you will, for animals and humans living in peace. Absolutely, and I hope we get there, Mr Raven, I really do. We're going to play the scene now where where the shark militia and the humans agree to live in peace, and I hope that the dear leaders of our world will take heed from the advice and wisdom and power of this motion picture. Let's cut to. Look, maybe we were a bit hasty in biting everything we could find. And I'll acknowledge perhaps the United States military should not have twice nuked the sharks. Yes, the Japanese are very upset about that. The Japanese we will not apologize for for several years, and even historically we will teach it as a necessary measure, even though it was a completely horrific and inhumane motion. But I say to you, Rear Admiral Brian, today we lay a path or a Gulf Stream current for the sharks and humans of the future to get along with each other. Let's both agree that we all like eating fish. Agreed. Agreed! We all like eating fish. Isn't it wonderful when we find that commonality? Who knew it would be fish? Yo sushi. Yo sushi indeed. And uh, I hear they are sponsoring the film, which is wonderful. Yes, they were very good with us. They took away some of the carcasses during the film and uh, they turned them into lunch. 
which was wonderful for us. Um, and we stand side by side with them moving forward. They are, yes, our commercial sponsors, absolutely. But I, I don't think that takes away from the message in any way. I think we can, as you saw in the scene there, and as you heard in my latest chart single, we all stand together side by side eating fish. And I think there's a beautiful metaphor there of them taking those carcasses, turning them into food. It's the conveyor belt circle of life. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yes. I don't really understand metaphor, but I entirely agree. Oh, Jack Raven, you are a metaphor. Thank you very much, I think. Now, I have heard rumour, Jack, that there is another film in the pipeline, or the Gulf Stream, or whatever you want to call it. Is that true? Well, um, I know you're you're seeking scoops constantly on on this show. Get one over your rivals. I'm quite the beaver with these things. I'll scoop and scoop until I find gold. <laughs> I have heard that, to be fair. Um, yes, Jack Raven's latest offering is a little bit off the beaten path. I don't know why the hell not. I could probably explain now. None of my minders are around. What we're doing this time is, instead of Jaws, we wanted to stick with the animal kingdom. So we are doing... A, another another similar thing but we're we're reinventing this time the free willy franchise but i wanted to up the, the class of my career so we're doing a series of films called free william shakespeare oh oh how wonderful how very how very dangerous to toy with a national treasure mr shakespeare we've uh, we've solved the birds and now we move on to the bards Wonderful. Well, we have got a clip of that now. Freeing William Shakespeare, a trailer. In a world where poetry is banned. In fair Orlando, where we lay our sea. Another day dawns, and so with it too. The whales all dance, and I come to you. With verily fish, fresh meat, and tithe for ye in these tiny pools to ride. Starring Robin Williams as William Shakespeare. I just think that one fish to another, I should quit this film and redo Flubber. And Anne Hathaway as the trainer. As I do watch these whales leapeth, I think what features our cruelty reapeth. And now, Christopher Walken as the bad man. You are not in verse because your poetry is the worst. Sponsored by the directors of Blackfish. Directed by the sponsors of Sliding Jaws. Coming to any body of water projected via satellite this autumn. Freeing William Shakespeare. Oh, that's that speared me right through the heart. I can't wait. Delightful that it was all written in iambic pentameter, and I love the poetry of it all. Jack, you are a very, very clever man. Thank you very much, Martina. And if you head out to any body of water near you, you should be able to see that film. Yes, and whether you see it in, in one of the Great Lakes or a puddle on your doorstep it will move you thank you very much I, i'm proud of it as i say it's coming out uh, this year all being well um i really think you need to see it on the biggest body of water possible really to to uh, appreciate the full visual effects of that film absolutely so get out there folks and go get wet in william shakespeare now jack we're coming to the end of our interview are there any final words of wisdom for our listeners well i uh, martina thank you i it's it's been a lovely interview i've really enjoyed talking to you today i really always enjoy your program and i just want to say to everyone out there stay safe enjoy film keep being creative keep being inventive and keep pushing the boundaries of your imagination and get out there and see sliding jaws thank you so much mr raven The Improvised Movie Director podcast features Sabrina Luisi as Martina Minow, with resident improvisers Vicky Hawley and Rory Vieira. With special thanks to today's guest, Hugh Edwards. IMDP is produced and edited by Steve Tanner. Theme music by Matt Brown and Johnny Griffiths. Episode artwork by Marty Sears. Additional music by Stan Babich.